In session 12 of our exploration of 1 John, disciples are going to be exhorted to practice what they already know. There's a famous football coach by the name of Vince Lombardi, and he had his team practicing for the big game. Scouts, which is another word for spies, were watching, and they report back to the other team, and that report was rather disappointing because all they could report was that Lombardi's team was just blocking and tackling, blocking and tackling, and blocking and tackling. Well, Green Bay won the game. The fundamentals, practicing what we know, the basics, that's the way to victory. Now, if you've missed previous sessions, you can catch them up on our website, www.hbcc.life, or on YouTube, and that channel is HBCC Life. You know, it probably is impossible to fully understand how Jesus can be fully God and at the same time fully human. Well, one group within this congregation that John is writing to decided that Jesus just could not be human. Unfortunately, if you remove either divinity or humanity from Jesus, you invalidate the atonement. The atonement is, is Jesus' sacrifice on the cross that makes it possible for your estrangement to God to be reconciled. You remove the divinity or the humanity for, from Jesus and there is no salvation. And what is salvation? Well, salvation is this. Salvation is knowing God. That's salvation. And knowing God, you are empowered by the Holy Spirit to be transformed into the image of God. And that image has been revealed to us in Jesus of Nazareth. So we come to know God. We come to know Him when we acknowledge that we don't. Then realizing our ignorance, we believe that Jesus is the one who reveals God the Father to us. And then we commit ourselves to grow in the personal knowledge of God through our imitation of Christ. And that's called discipleship. So acknowledging and believing and committing and then asking God to accept your faith is how you become into a, a situation, how you come into a situation where you start to know God because something mystical happens, something supernatural happens, something changes within you and you start your journey of knowing God. And knowing God is salvation. You are saved from ignorance. So I'd simply ask this morning, do you know God? Are you walking in the light? See, I want you in the light. I want you in the light. And if you would like a further introduction, just, just let me know. Otherwise, the general path to enlightenment involves acknowledging, believing, committing, and then asking God to accept your faith. And you can do that this very moment. This, right now, right now, you can ask God to accept your faith. And if you do, let me know, please, would you? Now, there is a difference between heretical teaching and false teaching. Now, false teaching is just having something wrong, maybe just some minor point of doctrine or practice, and just not quite within the realm of orthodoxy. But heretical teaching undermines the revelation of the Scripture, and it results in a separation from God and the fellowship. Now, we would do really well to be reminded that being part of the congregation is essential to holiness. See, it's together in the community of faith that we're transformed in the image of God and the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin, from all darkness, of all wrong being and all wrongdoing. See, light and darkness, they never coexist. You either have one or you have the other. And you must be an active part of a faith community to thrive as a believer. Now John tells us that those who adopted this heretical teaching about Jesus could no longer tolerate what the faithful already knew. And that was the basics of the faith. They accused those who remained of being ignorant. Not, they weren't even saved. They didn't even know God. They needed the special knowledge that they had. And so John writes this in 1 John chapter 2 verses 19 through 21. They left us, but they were never really with us. If they had been with us, they would have stuck it out with us, loyal to the end, but in leaving, they showed their true colors that they never belonged. 
but you belong. The Holy Spirit anointed you, and you all know it. I haven't been writing this to tell you something you don't know, but to confirm the truth that you do know, and to remind you that the truth doesn't breed lies. There are many reasons a person may leave a congregation. Not many are legitimate reasons. I've heard this so many times. God is calling me somewhere else. Usually means I don't like what's happening here. When brothers and sisters can't iron out differences, they can't come together in love and be honest with one another, they're shutting out the light and allowing dark corners to start to grow in their lives. Now you can't say such folks don't know God, but they certainly are not acting as if they do. And our mandate is clear. It is clear. Love God, love others. 1 Corinthians 13, starting in verse 4, the scripture reads, Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. It doesn't revel when others grovel, or takes, but takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. It puts up with anything. Trusts God always. Always looks for the best, and never looks back, but keeps going to the end. When we refuse to love, the darkness grows. That's simple. When we refuse to love, the darkness grows. One of the reasons that there are Catholics, Orthodox, and 30,000 Protestant denominations is because if I don't like it, if they don't agree with me, if they don't do it as I want, well, that's cause enough for me to leave the church. They don't play the music I like. The building's too hot, too cold. I don't like the pastor. I never get fed. And that's cause enough for me to leave the church. Now, even though reasons for leaving the church are often illegitimate, that doesn't mean the individual has left the faith. Yet what they really leave behind sometimes is a lot of hurts and a lot of questions. But they actually haven't left orthodoxy behind. In that case, it's most likely to release them with a prayer for their spiritual prosperity, just to, tr just to trust that God will work on their spiritual maturity. Now, I, I do need to, to let you know that there are legitimate reasons for leaving a congregation. For example, if leadership has lost integrity, is not being held accountable, that's a good reason to leave a congregation. If all of a sudden the congregation is not adhering to biblical truth, that's a good reason to leave a congregation. But when a brother or sister comes to a point where they disagree with orthodoxy, then they've slipped back into darkness. These then have left the fundamental teachings that John has laid out to this congregation whom he's writing to. And if you ever wonder, what are the fundamentals of the faith? I mean, I mean, obviously it's in the Bible, uh, but you know, when is the last time you read all thousand pages in one sitting? You will find the fundamentals of the faith an orthodox understanding of Christianity summarized in three creeds of the church. Three creeds, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. Now, you probably won't remember those, so if you go to our website, there is a manuscript of this teaching, and it has a link in it to those three creeds. And you can look those up. There's a good homework assignment for you. Look them up and read them. And that will give you a good idea of what right belief is all about. They come from the early years of Christianity and they just proclaim the basic tenets of the faith. 
And to dismiss one of these statements is to embrace heresy and become one who is anti-Christ. So John tells his readers, stay with the basics. And maybe John was repeating Jesus when Jesus said this in Matthew 24, 24. Fake messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Their impressive credentials and dazzling performances will pull the wool over eyes of even those who ought to know better. In this case, those who didn't know better left the congregation deciding to follow a different gospel than the one that they had received from John. Those that stayed did so because they had an anointing. The Holy Spirit anointed you. We know that when the Holy Spirit comes within you, He will guide you into all truth. We know that when we acknowledge and believe and commit and ask, God's affirmative answer results in our lives being sealed with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit resides in you, the prophet Isaiah proclaims this, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So I would encourage you, friends, learn to listen. Learn to hear the Spirit. If you're a believer, the Holy Spirit has taken up residence within you already. But you have to train yourself to hear His voice. And if not, your voice will speak in His name. Now, we don't yet know the full extent of the lies that those that left the congregation are spreading. Okay? In John's, in the letter yet, we haven't got there. The next verse is going to reveal to us what the big problem was. We'll see that for next week. I want to give you a quick review to reveal the lies that we do know so far that has been revealed to us. First, John tells us that those that left were indulging in some sort of immoral behavior, demonstrating that they were walking in darkness. Second, those that left claimed that they had not sinned. And ironically, sin is anything that destroys right relationships, and that is exactly what those left did, mocking those who remained on the way out the door. Thirdly, those that left were not following God's commands. They were failing to keep the oldest commands. Which is what? Anybody can think of the oldest commands? Yeah. Love God, love others. Fourthly, those that left hated their former brothers and sisters in Christ. And hate is incompatible with love. And fifthly, those that left valued the things of the world over the things of God following the dictates of egoism. So those that left were actually stumbling in the dark. And thought they were in the light. They were blinded by the dark. But they thought they were the enlightened ones. I want you in the light. And if you sense any corner of darkness within you, get rid of it. Just 1 John 1, 9 it. Have you memorized that scripture yet? 1 John 1, 9. If I party hardy, it doesn't matter because God's just going to forgive me. That's not it. That doesn't go that way. Right. I can do whatever I want, and at the very end, God is just going to give me a little wink and let me in. <laughs> no, that ain't it. I'm going to live exactly like I want to live, and I know in 1 John 1, 9, it says that the moment before I die, if I just confess my sins, I'm in. That's not what I'm talking about, my friends. I'm talking about living the Christian life, and all of a sudden you notice there's something that's not quite right inside of you. Then 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purge us from all unrighteousness. You see, there is no gray. It's either light or dark. There's no maybe. It's either yes or no. There's no good enough. It's Christ or antichrist. There's no twilight. And I want you in the light. And I want you to shine. I want you to be the light. And those walking in the light know that Jesus is fully God and fully human. That's the main issue in this letter. 
Those walking the light know that Jesus has made atonement for their sins, reconciling their relationship with God. Those walking in the light, they don't have to sin. They strive to live ethically and morally. But if they do sin, they can confess it and be restored. They first, John 1, 9. And those walking in the light walk with a congregation. They don't go it alone. And those walking in the light, they love God and they love others. I want you in the light. And once you're in the light, through acknowledging, believing, committing, and asking God, stay in the light. Yes, see, it is possible to fall back into darkness. But you stay in the light by continually practicing the fundamentals of the faith. By going back and doing the basics over and over and over and over again. Keep loving God as demonstrated by your obedience to His commands. Keep loving others as demonstrated by giving them respect. Even the bum on the corner of the street. Give them respect and then out of your abundance, try to meet their needs. The basics, the basics. I strongly suggest that you practice the seven habits of a disciple. And those basics there are reading the Bible and study, prayer, fellowship, service, worship, obedience, and contemplation. Practice the basics. You'll be victorious. Practice the basics and you win the prize which God has called you heavenward in Christ Jesus. Practice the basics. The basics. Nothing fancy. Just like Lombardi's team. All they were doing was blocking and tackling. They were just doing the basics. Same for us. It's by doing the basics that we'll stay in the light. Father God, we ask that you would bless us with doing. That we would do these things that keep us in the center of your will. Help us to hear your voice and not to confuse your voice with our own. Keep us from that. Thank you for the community of believers that keep us on track. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that leads, guides, and directs. Help us to be victorious. In Jesus' name we ask it.